thank you for inviting us and for also looking to our project in this way and uh, uh, also greetings from Ramallah to Gaza, to our brothers in Gaza. So uh, I'm very glad to be with you here and to share with you our actually experience in, in the projects in general and in proposal writing or uh, uh, recommendations. Okay, I will, I will talk uh, uh, in, at the beginning uh, three, four minutes about our institute and uh, the successful projects in the institute. And then I will spend my time on some tips and recommendations uh, on proposal writing, which actually is very, very difficult to talk about proposal writing. So I, will, I want to say this is the most difficult presentation for, this, for the presenter. So it's very difficult to talk about uh, proposal writing because this is a skill and skills usually are called tacit knowledge which is very difficult to express usually uh, so you only need to practice in order to learn but I will try. So our institute as you see it's called Sina Institute for Knowledge Engineering and Arabic Technologies. We are IT guys but we uh, uh, focus on like the Arabic technologies. Uh, our institute is new, we just officially launched in late 2011 and we became uh, one of the uh, top researchers uh, or top centers in the Arab countries specialized, I mean specialized in computational linguistics. Our research interest because a lot of people think that we are only government Actually, e-government is just one of, one, of, one of the applications for our research, but our main area is natural language processing and multilingual research engines, ontology, knowledge management, uh, digital libraries, so we say e-libraries, e-health, e-whatever you would. Okay, uh, one of our projects that we are also coordinating uh, uh, is called CIRA, which is an FP7 project, is about developing uh, multilingual search engines and we are now testing uh, two domains, uh, two search engines, one for cultural heritage and one for environment and ecology. We have four EU partners in this group. Another project that BRZ is funding, BRZ itself research funding, is called Arabic Ontology where we aim to digitize many dictionaries and build something called the Arabic Ontology which is so the word ontology, which is like a tree of the meanings of the words. Uh, we have another project funded by Google uh, on developing tools and APIs for uh, processing the Arabic language like spelling checkers, grammar checkers, and so on. Uh, we have another project funded by the Italian government uh, called GAPSIR about interoperability on uh, government uh, services with the University of Milano, Bicocca. They, they are coordinating. And coming to our Tempus project, which is ended in like one or two months ago, the goal of the project was to build the capacity of the Palestinian society, society here means government employees and a little of the private sector, on how to develop e-services in general and governmental services in particular. Uh, we are 11 partners and we are three Palestinian partners in this, we were three Palestinian partners in this project. Uh, BRZ is the coordinator and then Polytechnic University, Technical University, Khaduri, and we have three ministries, Ministry of uh, Telecommunication and Ministry of uh, Local Governments and Ministry of Interior. And we have five other EU partners from uh, different countries, Italy, France, UK, Belgium. Uh, just quickly, we developed, in this project, we developed about 300 training hours, let's say tutorials and courses, so this is the teaching material. Uh, and we taught them two times, so we taught like 600 hours, delivered to about 70 employees, very intensive program, you know, it's like a master for the employees who uh, were trained. And also we introduced this material into our curricula at the university. And by the way, uh, we recorded all sessions, 600 sessions, and they are all at the website of the project. 
thanks to our good uh, delivery. Help us in doing this. Uh, also, in this project, we were we had like an extra deliverable, which was not required, is to help the government on um, uh, uh, building uh, something called the Palestinian Interoperability Framework, the map. We have several, by the way, Zinnar was also published in scientific articles. So it was original uh, contribution also to science. But this is not, uh, not part of the uh, tempus. It was just an extra deliverable. We have several other publications in this. In the, uh, here, we developed also a national conference on e-government, many workshops, many business universities, uh, study tours to Europe, uh, and, and other activities. It's coming to tips upon proposal writing. So, now, before you start writing a proposal, I would say you should know that if you have a good ideas, they are not them. I mean, during the breaks, a lot of people said, ah, we have this idea, we have this idea, very nice. But this is <laughs> little, sometimes little part of the game. Uh, the impact is one of the most important things when you think about the proposal. Uh, your consortium. I will talk about these things. And if you don't know Dr. Nadal, you are not going to win. <laughs> Which means the national, your, your interaction with the national contact points. Why you are writing your proposal? You need a lot, a lot of information, and you should keep contact with the national contact point. And if we see them, by the way, also you should interact with the project officers in Brussels. Okay. Now. Also, be ready. You are going to compete hundreds of proposals, maybe some thousands of partners in these proposals, and the success rate depends on the year 10 to 20 percent. Okay. Well, this is really the truth. And be ready for this one. <laughs> now, be ready. I have another uh, optimistic. <laughs> So be ready that if you don't spend 100 or I would just estimate 100 to 160 full time days working on your proposal, this is if you have experience. You you know it's a lot of details. It's you know it's a lot of things that you should care about. Your communication with the partners takes a lot of time. Okay. And you have to learn the, 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 the rules of the game. So you cannot avoid reading the call, the guidelines, and, and, and many times, especially if you are new in this, in this kind of games. So you have to read. You cannot avoid this. You cannot just call your friend or your colleague or doctor that and just ask him. You should also read yourself, you know? And Okay, this is sometimes very important because, okay, I have a good idea, but, and I think, oh, people are talking about temples, so I'm going to apply for temples. doesn't work like this. You have to understand that maybe temples is not the right tool or the right action for your idea. So, temples has certain goals. They will fund these goals. Okay, I mean, uh, what I call in each action or each uh, tool, like P7, Arouse, Mondos, Toembos, etc., they have a unit in Brussels, so they have agenda. You should know this agenda. Okay? And I uh, will go here. And you are not, when you submit your proposal, you are not go, you are not there to defend your proposal. It should defend itself. Now, okay, the second phase is you should gather intelligence, what I call it. Um, you should read about previous projects. Sometimes you have excellent idea, very good, but actually, sometimes other universities in your country have implemented it in a proposal. Or sometimes inside your university they are doing such projects. So you should really uh, read about previous projects, know about previous proposals, the state of the art in the field. And, uh, yeah, see something. Now, coming to the team. The team is very important. You know, we are again faculty members, researchers, we have some connections, for example, in Europe, and we design, this is what mistakes sometimes we do, we design a project for the consortium. We 
which is, in this case, you are not going to win. What you should do, you should bring a good team for your idea, not the opposite. Uh, you should Google your partner. This is very important. Don't bring a partner if he's not going to bring big contribution to your project. So you have to have very strong uh, number, uh, minimum number of partners in your proposal. Now, I want to show you something like a definition of what is a killer proposal in FP7 and, and Timbus. So the, which is the evaluation criteria, which is public. For example, in FP7, there are three measures. Scientific and technological excellence of your proposal. It's, you get five marks. Implementation and the, and the management and so on, five marks. Impact, five marks. So, you will not be even judged or shortlisted if you get less than 12. So they start looking to your proposal if you are above 12. But, doesn't mean you win. If you win, I mean, you should get at least 14. And this is Mr. practice. In Timbus is the same. There is relevance, quality of the partnership, quality of the project's content and methodology, dissemination and sustainability. Uh, and there is maps. Proposals are ranked and then ordered based get funding. Which means you have to score in all items. So don't forget one item. Uh, and sustainability, I just want to highlight this. Timbus or Erasmus Mundus or FP7, there they want to see how are you going to continue after the end of the project. They will not keep funding you. They want to give proposals to ideas that will uh, uh, follow up. Okay, the last two slides, I just make them like, I want to be very tired, really tired. If you are a beginner, um, I want to be tired. If you are a manager here, like president, vice president, dean, or department chair, if you are new in this field, so the tip is, or the, the rule, the most difficult step to be a billionaire is to get the first million. Um, which means, if you want to be a fundraiser, the first project is the most difficult. You keep trying, but you don't really win. What is the secret? Join the big guys. The guys who are the, let's say, call them the fundraisers. Join them. And then you will learn the game from them. So you can go along. But why they will accept you? Because the big guys like to play with each other. Well, my answer is, you should really work, show them that you work very hard, much more than them. You are very committed, you are very intelligent, and so on. In this way, I think you, I mean, I want to say, I say, I want to call it, say it. But the Libertarsh Sabi Kijmal, the Rikab Ala Dabba Jabal, is the same, it's the same. It's the same. It's the same. It's the same. That's it. I have some tips, I will not talk to anyone here, so I will use some slides. Some tips to managers, to department chairs, so if you are a dean, please listen, if you are BB, please listen, if you are president, please listen. Why will a faculty member spend full time and stressful months writing a proposal in four months with acceptance rate like 15 percent? Why? If you don't give them something back, not necessarily money, sometimes only respect, sometimes a promotion, but if you don't do anything here, your university is not going, or your faculty, or your department is not going to have anything. And another thing, please encourage what I call them, I call them the supporting units, maybe they call them something else. The R&D offices, the grant, the grant offices, the BR, the HR, the purchasing department, the financial department. Sometimes they are not supporting the proposals. While you are writing, you face a lot of bureaucracy, a lot of really discouragement, this 
motivation. Who is, the, who is responsible? You guys. Because these, sometimes they don't care about if you win or you lose. This is admin uh, departments. Uh, I mean, I, I, I have experience in like four universities in my life. <laughs> uh, some of them are good, some of them are not good. Well, it depends. Uh, and the second, the third thing is, I suggest you, because sometimes you get your university get a lot of proposals, but there are like no progress, generally progress at the university. Why? Because you were thinking in terms of projects. You should really think in terms of profiles of projects. You know, encourage like your faculty members to focus on certain areas, on certain things, tell them, oh, okay, the second two years we need more programs. Or sometimes you have a lot of programs, why are you going to temples? For example, to these things, go to something else. So you need to steer the faculty members in order to uh, have impact on your university. And uh, here, what I wanted to say is that sometimes here in Palestine we think, oh, there is a lot of research money. No, there is no research here. There is no research. In Timbus, there is, research is not allowed. In uh, Erasmus Mundus, research is not allowed. In FBC in cooperation, research is not allowed. So, not all the projects we have are about doing research money. Okay, just to... So, there's a lot of things for uh, these guys to help. Uh, thank you for listening. And I promise I will try to help if you have any question, anytime, not, not only today. Uh, please, uh, this is my email and I will try to help.